Defining crime presents us with a series of difficulties and complexities because what we consider to be crime is a social construction. It's dynamic, contested and contingent. In other words, what is crime, in inverted commas, varies over time and place. It isn't a universally agreed fact or a constant. It's a socially constructed and shifted reality. So, for example, the definition of crime in the UK has expanded and contracted over time to include and to exclude different behaviours. A useful example of this is homosexuality, which was criminal until the 1960s, whereupon it was legalised, decriminalised, and no longer formed part of the definition of crime, in inverted commas, because it wasn't a crime. Another example would be youth crime. Up until 1998, youth crime was constituted by criminal behaviours committed by young people aged predominantly from 14 to 17. In 1998, the age of criminal responsibility was effectively lowered to 10. So all of a sudden, 10, 11, 12 and 13 year olds were officially capable of being recognised as young offenders. And so the category of youth crime expanded, net widened. So when behaviours are added or removed to a definition, that definition inherently changes. And that's a difficulty if we want to seek an agreed, consistent definition of crime. It's also the case that what constitutes criminal behaviour differs cross-culturally. So what we consider crime in the UK may not be exactly what's considered crime in other parts of the world. The difficulty here, or the tension here, is when we try to explain crime. If we're looking for, as lots of, of many theorists have looked, for universal definitions of crime, so they can produce universal explanations of crime, and it simply isn't possible because crime is so dynamic. 